Hi, I am Dmitro Shvets, your host at the Start Global Insights, where I interview experts in different countries about local business secrets and international expansion experience. Today uh, we will talk about an um, interesting and uh, faraway country uh, that is called Canada. And my guest today is uh, Maria Fernanda Guzman. Uh, she is a senior international market consultant uh, at the government of Canada, and she has more than 15 years of experience of helping different companies to enter different markets. And I hope that today she will uh, share with us all experience that uh, she has and all insights about the Canadian market. Hi, Maria. Hi, Dimitro. Thank you very much for your invitation. Um, my background is uh, art. I studied fine arts. And I ended up doing my master's in, in, in Italy. And um, after my master's, I came to Canada and I immigrated from Italy to Canada. And uh, I couldn't find anything to do in art. So I have to reinvent myself and start with business. I went back to university. I did my master's in international business. And I started working for the government. So um, in and out with my own company as well, supporting international companies to come to Canada and also Canadian companies to reach international markets. So it looks like you have quite a um, different uh, nation background. So you know how how it is comparable with to Italy, for example, you or the Bolivia and Canada. Yeah, so having the opportunity to be in different countries, uh, it was an excellent background for me because Canada is a multicultural country. It's a very diverse. We learn to to adapt in uh, different cultures and um, to do business with different cultures is a very exciting experience as well. Great. So that's uh, one of the questions actually that I had in mind uh, because as far as I know that uh, everybody says that they are Canadians. Yeah. So they, in, and they are actually proud to be Canadians, but at the same time, people that immigrate to Canada, they still keep their um, national background yeah, and, and uh, connections to uh, their homeland. Yes, yeah, there are two important demographic trends that we should be, uh, be aware of when we're thinking about Canada. Canada is, uh, has an aging population of, uh, with 19% uh, population age 65 and all, on over, and also uh, the demographic important of the multiculturalism. So why? Because, yes, as you said, Dimitro, we come from different parts of the world. We feel very Canadian. We are grateful with the country, with the opportunities, but at the same time, we have our own roots. So that's very important when we think about Canada and the imports, because based on the, demogra demo the demographic trend, uh, it does also affect in what kind of products the, the population is looking for. What are the behaviors of the market? What are the products that the, the, the people is, is willing to buy? What is the price? So Canada has been always very diverse. Uh, it is a country that 80% of the products are coming from outside. So the tendency to negotiate and to be very sharp on the process is a very clear tendency. Yeah, so uh, you you're like used to import. Yeah, so you used to have uh, conversation with uh, importers to from from abroad, from from different other countries. Correct. So when we think about Canada, we tend to have so many presumptions. Like, uh, for example, it's a faraway country, very very cold, and f uh, they're gonna be needing a lot of wood, a lot of sweaters, a lot of parkas and winter boots, but suddenly you come to Canada and you need to recognize what is the behavior of the market, what is really Canada about, where the people and the consumers are putting their money. So for example, 50% of the income for Canadians are they're spending in two basic things, taxes and home. So when you think about that, the other 50%, you said, okay, what are the needs of the of the Canadians? So it is food it is um spending on on uh, recreation spending on schools and spending on health so we need to understand that uh when we want to achieve the canadian market what is the behavior who's our customer i tend to said to say to the to my clients um 
check for the water in the swimming pool before you jump into the swimming pool because sometimes the assumptions are not the right ones. Almost always the assumptions are not uh, the right ones. You should, you should check. So assumption is good, but then you should check it. So we, we cannot export taxes to Canada. You already have own, yeah? Correct. No, don't come with taxes, please. <laughs> okay, taxes are way too high, 50%. We are struggling with surviving with the taxes. No. So taxes, no, please. The, keep, keep in mind that the Canadian consumer is always well-informed and demanding. It's very uh, conscious about pricing. Um, they like to uh, respect the multicultural aspect of the product, the story behind the product. They, they like to connect with with the with the with the producer with the company who's behind the product they they like the environmental respect and and also the you know the sustainability when we talk about products and different different aspects and also services because we we import services as well as we export services so i've been in both sides i've been helping companies to come to canada around the world um, and also i've been helping ontario companies right now exporting um, to other countries. So, for example, when we talk about Ontario, I was telling Dimitro that Ontario is where everything is happening right now. The money is here. The manufacturing is here. The ICT, the, in, the communication technology is here. The cybersecurity is here. So, uh, it's uh, right now, I'm working with Ontario companies exporting but also I've been working with countries from outside Canada to import into Canada. So you, this interesting thing about the, the, the Ontario that you, you said, yeah. Uh, so it is important to, to choose, uh, to understand that Canada is different uh, in different uh, regions. Yes. So, so yes. It, it is not that you are only choosing the country, but you should choose the region where you're entering. So, yeah, Dimitri, as you may know already, uh, Canada is the second largest country in territory. We have six demographic regions uh, and 10 provinces and territories. There are three levels of government, federal, provincial, and territorial, which is important to note since uh, regulations are different. So what happened in the all different uh, areas? When we talk about the 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 Pacific side is Vancouver, and that's be tending to be more uh, inclined to the Asian population because, of course, it's closer to the Asian region rather than the Atlantic region. So when we talk about the prairies, we talk about European people coming into Canada. When we talk about Ontario, it's the most diverse province in Canada. And we also talk about the Atlantic, which is more uh, the Prince Edward Island and all these uh, different provinces. That is a different behavior. You you keep in mind that we have two different um, cultures here. The main the main cultures talking about Anglo Saffron and the and the French. So it's a different way to do business when you talk with the with the Quebec province and the French province, and when you talk about with the Ontario province, which is the British province or the English province. So you have to keep in mind that even though we talk about Canada as one, yes, the behavior of the provinces, the behavior of the consumers and the behavior of the buyers is pretty different from one province to another. And, and you feel that even uh, inside? So if you sell, uh, so if, if not, this is about export or import. Uh, so the internal companies, domestic companies also have different strategies for different regions in Canada. Correct. So, for example, uh, we also do internal uh, business with Ontario, uh, Quebec, British Columbia, and even though the north, right now we're very focused on the north, uh, and um, the differences, they're there, for example, timing and the timing responses, timing is key in Canada in all the provinces, but remember we are a country that have like a five to six months of winter so everything has to be ready. We're talking about salt. It has to be ready ahead of time. If we're talking about uh, products that we need before the winter hits the country and even though the regions. So when we do business between Ontario and uh, the province of Quebec, the tendency is to focus on timing and the tendency is focusing on, on the response of the, of the products going back and forth. And uh, it looks like also there, sh there might be different product sets in supermarkets yeah, in different regions. 
of course, it depends of the of the population uh, of the the immigration population which is located. When we talk about Ontario, we have a different set of of uh, population from from different countries versus Quebec. So, if you go to the Quebec supermarkets, you will have products that very different products that we don't find in Ontario. Keep in mind also that we need to have labeling regulations in different, in different languages. So it's like basically dealing with two different countries at the same country. So you are accustomed to import even inside of the country. Yeah? You're like Correct. Imp- import huge. and exporting from, from region to region. Region to region is a huge uh, movement, uh, commercial movement between different uh, provinces. Right now, sometimes that's one of the challenges that we face when we talk about with Ontario companies, they're already selling internally so much into the province of Quebec or the province of uh, Alberta that they don't need to think about anything else. So it's it's a beauty uh, dynamic commerce uh, integration between the provinces. And we all have different products. We all have different capacities and different offer, offering for the different provinces. And the language is uh, different, yeah? So you, you, you might not be understood in, in uh, English uh, in, uh, in the French uh, part of the Canada, yeah? Correct, correct. So the French, uh, the Quebec, the, the, the province of Quebec is mostly French, but we also have in Ontario up north uh, the French speakers. Yes, uh, when we talk about the Atlantic side, Vancouver and Alberta and the Prairies is an English speaker base. But Ontario and Quebec, Prince Edward Island and all that area from the Atlantic side, we find a lot of a lot of French. Yes. So it is so that if you are trying to sell to uh, French uh, uh, French regions, and then uh, it might be so that uh, nobody will understand you in English. Well, um, or 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 they are like bilingual. They they are. We all are bilingual. We are the the two languages are the official languages. I mean, like meaning that we are bi- bilingual. So um, if you're going to Quebec or any city, for example, Ottawa, we speak French. And we speak English as well, so it's it's something that we keep in mind. Um, the province of Quebec is always straightforward. They want French first, and English as a second language is the opposite on the other ones. The English is the first one, and the French is the second language. Mm-hmm. So this is more like psychological uh, thing, yeah. That if if you will go to Quebec, it is better to speak French to be more. Uh, polite to to the locals yeah? exactly it's more polite mm. it's more acceptable you will be more welcoming but at the same time if you don't speak french they will respond to you in english because business basically uh it's a, english is the language for for business but i somebody told me english is for business french is for love but in this, <laughs> in this country in this country french and english are for both Let's say that. <laughs> okay, clear. Um, if you would um, enter Canada, yeah. So let's let's imagine the situation that uh, we have uh, a company that produces, for example, candies or clothes, or whatever, and they would like to sell it in Canadian market. What uh, could be kind of a roadmap or a step sequence that would you do on their place? Well, the first thing I'm going to talk about is knowing your market, knowing knowing who you're going to be selling to, knowing your customer is key, essential before you intend to penetrate any any market. Uh, after you know the market, you already be very rigorous and very you did your due diligence. You already know that Canada is the market that you're going to achieve. Uh, then you're going to extend uh, the rules of origin you're going to understand we we have to keep in mind that we have a, a trade free trade agreement with ukraine in this case um and it's very generous it's very um important to understand that the 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 trade is there the free trade agreement is there kuzma is there kufma is there to help uh, the Ukrainian companies to come to Canada and vice versa. So the second thing that I will say is be very conscious on on the pricing. 
is part of the due diligence, is part of the study, is part of what the Canadians need to know about your product. Price is very important. Packaging is very important because, as I said, we have the different labelings in English and French. And then that's important to know that I'm going to put a product in a different market and I need to understand what is the packaging rules, the regulations for the labeling. If we need to do product adaptation, if it's something that is going to be, for example, if we need to consider, if we talk about apparel, if we need to consider the different sizes, because we also tend to do, you tend to have different sizes in that Canada. We also need to make sure that the timing of the buying because we have buying seasons depending on the product and also the the transportation, the competition and the transportation. So keep in mind a lot, it's a lot of homework, but at the same time it's very well, it's worth it to do it before jumping into a new market, in this case Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that if people choose Canada to uh, to enter, so as, it, as their focus market, they are already at least they should have uh, this information about the potential because it, it is much more difficult to export overseas yeah, than in, in nearby markets. So if you choose Canada, then uh, there should be a reason behind. <laughs> so right. so if, if, you, if you did it, then uh, at least you, you need to be prepared yeah, and you need to, to study the market. Correct. But um, what about the sources or how uh, maybe some hints how you could study this market uh, from uh, not entering the market yes yeah, so not 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 coming to canada of course at some uh, point uh, of time you should go to uh, a local market and as you said to see it with uh, with own eyes yeah to go to the supermarkets or chain stores but if you are doing some uh, remote work yeah how how could yeah. you study so... study the market when you can you can you can come into the market to do the you know like exploratory mission you just like to come here and take a look around and uh the observation when you come is very key i always tell my customers and my companies open your eyes when you go to the market that you want to achieve because it's not only uh, what are you seeing? You can sit down in a mall or you can be sitting in a in a restaurant and take a look of the behavior of the consumers is very important. But when you are overseas and you don't have that opportunity, you have internet. The beauty of internet right now is that we communicate very fast. All the information is there. The, web, the website of the Canadian government is very um, well documented with lots of insights and also by provinces. As I said, if you go to Ontario.ca, you have information about Ontario. If you go to Vancouver, you go to Montreal, all of the provinces have lots of information about um, the behavior of the market, the size of the market, the composition of the market, uh, the quality of the products, what kind of products. We have directories, we have databases that tells you what is the main product that Canada is importing or where is the main product that Ontario is importing from outside and from the different uh, provinces. So databases, internet, make sure that the, the resources that you're using are are, are very uh, trusty. Uh, basically, government is trusty from the Canadian government. You see all the information. Also, there is a lot of uh, potential opportunity with um, consultants. If they want to talk to consultants, they can give you, give you, make your life easier in order to, for you to understand the market and uh, study and evaluate your product and the position of the company in order to achieve the market. Uh, where do you get? Clients. That's a question that everybody asks me. Where do I get the clients? Where do I get the clients? One way it's again study in the in the websites and the internet. There's a lot, a lot of information available from the government and also from private companies who are willing to to share information and associations, uh, clusters, uh, everything that is free of charge and internet sourcing, security sourcing is, is very useful. One way is uh, the trade shows as well. Uh, they are just re coming back very slowly. Canada doesn't have big trade shows. It's very specific, but US have trade shows that we communicate together. Sometimes the business is done in, in US and it's coming back to Mexico. I mean, 
it's coming back to Canada and vice versa. So sometimes you think about, I'm going to sell into Canada, but you need to find a buyer right there in, in US or vice versa. I'm going to sell into US, but hey, basically the head the headquarters are here. So you have to come here. I don't know if I gave you a very good idea. Yeah, the idea is uh, really good. So it's, it's actually like... Um... I don't know how you will translate it in English, so I will make the direct translation. You are like uh, hitting two uh, hairs with one shot. Correct. Uh, entering the uh, the Canada, you can actually enter uh, U.S. Uh, market more easy than than you will enter that uh, directly to U.S. Correct, correct. Because uh, we share a very long uh, border with the U.S. and U.S. is our main uh, trade partner. So everything happened very fast together. I always, we always call Canada as the back door for the, for the U.S. and U.S. as the front door for Canada. Um, coming back to your advice to study the clients and uh, to find the clients uh, from the open source, um, I always tend to, to add to this open source information the, the human touch. Yeah? So to, to talk to clients prior uh, to sales to understand uh, what are uh, what is inside of their heads, yeah. So what what they are paying attention to, how the, for example, how buyers are uh, choosing the suppliers, what they are lacking now because they are they totally uh, for sure they have already super suppliers, yeah. So if you are coming to them, then they should uh, think why they should work with you and not with existing ones. But uh, there, there might be something that they are lacking with existing. And uh, to understand that, you need to talk to people. How easy it is to, from your experience yeah, and from your point of view, how easy it is to contact um, from abroad, from remotely, not on the exhibition, yeah, just to call, for example, or to write in LinkedIn uh, and to ask uh, for, I don't know, interview yeah, or some questions about their uh, expectations and jobs to be done. So that's a very good question, Dimitri, because that's uh, that's like uh, the main thing for the for the companies, not in not only outside Canada but also inside Canada. I had the fortune to work with many many buyers around my life, and there sometimes we became we become friends, we can become very good friends, and and our personal talkings, uh, getting a wine or a coffee, we talk about, okay, tell me, how do you get the attention from a client? What is it? Tell me something that nobody knows and uh, that I can share with my, with my companies. And basically they said to me, all of them, we receive a hundred emails per day. People from all around the world sending us uh, electronic uh, catalogs, electronic pictures. So our emails are full and heavy. Do you think we go one by one? And I said, mm, I hope, I hope you do because uh, some companies are there. No, we don't. We don't go one by one. Basically, our assistant goes over and delete them or classify them. So how can I make my company to cut your attention? It's on the wording. It's on the description. It's on the title of the subject of the email. Don't do anything like everybody else, like... My company is called this and this and this. I sell this and this and this. I am in China, this and this. And this is my catalog. You need to be respectful of my time. You need to know about my company. You need to know who I am. You need to know what are we looking for. And how do you know that? You do your homework. You visit my website. You go and, and look and compare your products with my products. You compare my prices with your prices. You have to show some kind of respect that catch my attention. And then I said, okay, let's open this email. Oh, okay. So simple, but difficult. You need to, to be very personal in this case. You need to be very personal. You need to dismiss, dismissify the buyer and said, okay, I'm talking to you direct. So when I start, um, contacting buyers at the at the very age of my life as a consultant it was very hard for for me to get a response because i was doing exactly the same so i start connecting with them in a human level like this is me and this is my company and this is what i want you to see from my company this is my product 
And this is what I want you to see from my product and how different it is. So as I said, it's always a differentiation, always something that you have that I don't have and you make my life easier. Because if you're giving me 10 electronic brochures or directories and I have to go one by one, it's going to take in my whole day and I don't have time for you. So something is always helping the buyer, feeling that the buyer is your partner and you need to get his attention first and you need to make him open the email and read the email and then he will start contacting you. Pricing, everything has to be in one paragraph, not long and long email. It has to be why you should take me as a, as a your um, provider. This is my basic company. This is what I do. This is who I am. This is my product. This is my differentiation. This is my price. And then that's how we manage to get the, the buyers. Mm -hmm. So it's like knocking to doors and then uh, hoping that you guess uh, what they really need. Basically, it's um, it's like everything in life, right? Mm -hmm. You just you just present yourself, knock on the door, and wait for the best. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like uh, it's like you're finding a job. <laughs> like how many how many emails you send? Thousands of emails until you somebody get your attention. And remember. Uh, I think it's even worse with a with a job because right now artificial intelligence read the the resumes, so we don't have opportunity to have a contact with anybody until our resume is selected. But it's by but it's a, by in artificial intelligence. In this case, you get the email. How do you get the email from a buyer? Sometimes they have it in LinkedIn. Sometimes we need to pay extra hundred dollars per month to get the special edition of LinkedIn that we can have the emails. But instead of going massive emails, concentrate your energy in five potential clients that you really want to achieve and why you want to achieve this client. Not because I like it. Why do I like to want to achieve this client? And then create the whole strategy to achieve this client. A study the website, a study the the differentiation of the products, prices. So where they where they're sourcing from? Are they sourcing from Europe, from North America, from Asia? Where are they sourcing from? So know your client be before you try to achieve the client. So my dear listeners, our conversation with Maria was so useful and exciting that I couldn't cut out anything from it and split the recording in two parts. In the second part of the interview, we will talk about the Canadian buyer's expectations and other nuances of approaching your potential Canadian client. So, stay tuned. And not to miss the second part of the interview about the Canadian market, don't forget to subscribe to Start Global Insights on all major platforms for podcasts like Spotify, Google or Apple and on YouTube.